Um, Ray, I do apologise. You, you rang twice at 10 o'clock. I was speaking to my doctor. It was rather important. I, okay. I do apologise. That's the reason why I wasn't able to take your call. I, my, my apologies to you, sir. That's right. I thought there was something wrong. Uh, the scripture say time and unforeseen circumstances yeah. before us all. Right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. um, well, your, your literature is certainly very interesting. I've spent many hours looking at it. Um, a couple of quick fire questions. The King of the South. Now, I know that you say the King of the North is Russia. And I think you believe the King of the South is is the seventh head of the satanic wild beast, which you claim is England or, or the United Kingdom and the United States. Is that right? Yeah, the King of the North is um, we can see is Russia and its allies. That's an important thing. And um, but yes, you're right. King of the South is uh, the alliance of Britain and America, uh, and who form formulated the, uh, the United Nations which is in opposition to God's kingdom. And the king of the north and the king of the south, they would be seen as enemies of God, I take it? That's right, yes, both. Mm, I'd have, right, it's a bit shocking to me, so you'd see, because I live in the United Kingdom, and uh, so on, yes. uh, if, if the Bible commanded me to have a, you know, seditious view of the crown, that it's somehow wicked or satanic, if the Bible commanded me to um, commanded me to that position, then I'd have to stick to that. But I don't believe the Bible commands me to have a to 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 believe that the monarch, you know, the crown, which is the head of the government of the United Kingdom, in the year twenty twenty, is somehow well. You, your book, "What Can the Bible Teach Us," on page thirty three. It says, quote, all governments belong to Satan. Um, that's right. They're, um, they're in opposition to God's kingdom. Uh, they promote their own their own kingdoms as opposed to God's kingdom, and they've always been opposers to the ones who advocate God's kingdom. But you're talking about the British and the American governments, including the head of state of both, which would be the presidency of the United States and the crown of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Is that what you're talking about? Well, these, these governments, um, as is shown in Daniel, um, are at the bottom of that image. And uh, those governments would be destroyed by that uh, stone coming out of the mountain. Um, I, I'm very which destroys the whole, the whole image, not just... Um, the Britain and American alliance. It's, when you look at it, it's, there was um, a piece in the, I think it was in the Watchtower, um, it does mention um, in that King of the North in the time of the end, it says how, how can we um, identify um, the King of the North? Let's see if I can get the, uh, the paragraph. Um, could, you give me the, could you give me the exact reference, please, and I will write it down. The exact the exact full reference, please. Right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the May Watchtower, and it's the study Oh, article. sorry, no, hang on. May Watchtower, uh, is that this year? That, that's right, yeah, 2020. 2020 Watchtower, yeah, okay. And it's uh, the May edition. Yeah. And it's uh, study article number 19. Right, study article 19. I'm just writing this down. Is there a page number? Yeah. Um, yes. with um, electronic devices. <laughs> they very rarely show you up a page number, yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, study out it's page two. Page two. Yeah, and it gives you references to the um, the seventh head of the wild beast, two horned beast, the false prophet in the book of Daniel. Which and, you say uh, is is United States and United Kingdom. So they're, um, you might say, a, um, what do you call it, a united force against God's kingdom. So you'd see them both as of the devil, the, you, the United Kingdom, the United well, States? Well, the scriptures say that the, the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, which is Satan, the devil. But, and we refer to that um, when Jesus was tempted 
because uh, Satan uh, tempted Jesus. He says that um, you're going to have to do Ray. You're going to have world. to Ray. You're going to have to do one thing at a time. I don't like being yeah, sorry. being machine gunned. Okay, okay, yeah. The first verse no, you okay. referred to, I think, was taken completely out of context. One John five nineteen. And that's got nothing to do with government. It's to do with people who are born of God in verse 18 and people who haven't been born of God in verse 19. It's talking about individuals. So um, where did you get that scripture from? You quoted 1 John 5, 19. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Yeah. Right, but that's got nothing to do with governments. That's not talking about governments. It's talking about the whole world. Right. Could, could you actually... If you're going to discuss the Bible with me, you need to actually read the passages because I like to go from from the actual Bible. I like to read the Bible passage slowly in context, one verse at a time. It's no good just machine gunning me with a whole load of Bible yeah. verses. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to just ignore yeah. everything you say. Um, I, I've spoken to many, many yeah. people. I've spoken to many Christadelphians, Mormons. Mm -hmm. Way International, The Family, when I lived in London, uh, The Family, The Unification Church. I, I've spoken to all of them. And they all have the same policy of sort of quickly machine gunning John, John 3.17 and Luke 4.12 and Matthew this and uh, the, the First Corinthians that. They, they machine gun you with, you know, half a dozen verses in about 20 seconds as if that proves yeah. their point. Uh, it doesn't. You need to... Read, read 1 John 5, 18 and 19, because you get the context from verse 18, where yeah. it's a contrast between individuals, people who've been born of God, and individuals who haven't been born of God. It's got nothing to do with governments. No, it's dealing with the whole world of mankind, isn't it? Would you like to... All right, shall I read it, or do you want to read it? No, I've got it here. Which yeah. one do you want, 18 and 19? Yeah. It says, uh, from 18, it says, we know that everyone who's been born from God does not practice sin, and the one from God watches him, and the wicked one cannot take hold of him. We know that we originate with God, but the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. Right, so we know, first person plural is used twice, mm -hmm. John's yeah. identifying himself with his readers here, and when he says we know that whoever is born of God does not sin, does not sin means practice sin, all right? But he who has yep. been born of God keeps himself. He's identifying himself with his readers that we are, he's saying, Christians who've been born of God. In, in yes. John 3, 3 to 5, uh, this same un understanding is slightly mistranslated as born again. There's a reason why it's um, mistranslated as, or poorly translated as born again. In John 3, 3 and 5, it's actually born from above. And there's reasons why, if you go into the history of the Catholic Church, why it was trans mistra poorly translated as born again uh, and, um, and not born from above. So it's people who've been born of God, that's Christians. And in verse 19, it's simply, we know, first person plural again, that we are of God, that's the Christians. And then here's the people who are not born of God. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. If you believe whole world refers to every single person on earth, then what you're saying is that every Jehovah's Witness, including the governing body, would be under the sway of the wicked one. It's talking about his, uh, the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. In right. Other words, what does whole world mean? Yes. What does whole world mean? Yes. Well, um, it talks about the, uh, the Greek is cosmos. Yeah. It means um, all non-Christian human society, regardless of their race. So the whole world of mankind no, you is lying it, in, it, in the power. It's simply talking about every human being who's not born of God. Every human being who's not born of God, yes, yeah. is Fine. lying in that power. Right. In other words, Satan has, has um, influence or control over the world to harm these ones. It's talking about individuals who haven't been born of God. It's a simple contrast. We know that we are of God, in verse 19, meaning born of God. And the contrast is, there are also people in the world who are called the whole world. These are ones who haven't been born of God. So it's a simple contrast between people who've been born of God and people who haven't been born of God. Individuals. Governments can't be born of God. You can't say that the French government was born of God yesterday, 
or the Egyptian government was born of God a thousand years ago. Governments can't be born of God. It's individual human no, beings who are born of God. So this is no reference whatsoever to governments. You can't apply whole world to governments. It doesn't apply. It's refer referring to people. Exactly. And how, how do people um, react uh, when they're under the influence of Satan the devil? Uh, agreed. We see the reactions today, don't we? Yeah. So um, this has no reference to governments at all. It's, well, the book of Daniel refers to governments. But this scripture that you've quoted... It's talking about the whole world of mankind. It's talking about... Uh, in how, as you say, there are two divisive forces here, one serving God and one serving Satan the devil. The whole world of mankind is not used in the text. It says whole world. You've added mankind, which isn't in the text. Does the whole world of mankind involve every single one of the seven billion people on earth today? Or is it people on earth today who are not born of God? Well, when was this written? First John. Does, does whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one apply to every single person on earth when John wrote this who's not born of God? So how would, how would it be shown that they are under the power of the wicked one? Let's go through it again. Let's start at verse 18. We know that yeah. whoever is born of God does not sin. Now, governments can't be born of God. Only individuals can be born of God, people, human beings. So this is no reference to governments. He's not talking about the government of Gaul or the government of Rome or the government of Egypt. It's talking about individuals. Yeah. We know, first person plural, so John is identifying himself with his readers, that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one, that's Satan, does not touch him. So John is identifying himself with his readers, and he's saying, we are born of God. Agreed? Yes, yes. Now that's repeated in verse 19. We know that we are of God. So that's John and his readers and the other Christians on earth who've been born of God. And then it says, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked ones. That's simply the rest of humanity on earth at the time, but it would also apply now, who haven't been born of God. Yeah, the whole world. Yeah, so no reference to governments. This isn't a proof text that no. the British government no. is under the power of the devil. In fact, there are people involved in the British government who are good Christian people who love the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew, I yes. used to know an MP, Steve Double, of St. Austell and Newquay um, 25 years ago. He's a Christian man. He loves Jesus. Okay, he was involved in his father's Pentecostal church, and I think a lot of the Pentecostal stuff is frankly uh, a little bit silly, um, but perhaps he's matured since then. I haven't seen him for 25 years, but he, you know, he loved the Lord Jesus Christ and served Christ. He became an MP, I think about five years ago or something. So there's one Christian involved in the British government who's a Christian. Her Majesty the Queen has expressed her faith in Christ. She loves Jesus. She's told about Jesus' resurrection from the dead and how she believes in that and trusts in Christ's sacrifice. I've heard her say that on television a couple of years ago. So she's another Christian. And in Foy, in Cornwall, many years ago, about 10, 15 years ago, I heard a talk by Anne Widdicombe, who used to be a member of the Conservative government, and she expressed her faith in Christ. So there's three Christian people involved in the British government. So whilst I would agree with you, there are many people involved in many governments who possibly are under the sway of the devil. Not everyone involved in the British government is involved with the devil or under the sway of the devil, because I know of three good Christian people, Steve Double, Her Majesty the Queen and Anne Widdicombe, who love and serve Christ. That's all I'm proving. And this verse, 1 John 5, 19, is not saying that the British government is under the sway of the, is under the control of the devil. It's got nothing to do with governments, unless you wish to make the claim that a government can be born of God. No, um, the only government that can be born of God is the kingdom that Jesus will rule. Wouldn't you agree with that? Wouldn't you agree with that? No, because the kingdom Jesus will rule is not a physical kingdom it's a spiritual kingdom at the present time it's it's people souls uh, people who have committed their lives to christ who are indwelt by uh, father son and holy spirit and who are in the new covenant that's christ's kingdom it's his church his his people 
But anyway, um, can we move on, unless you have any last words to say about 1 John 5, 19. This has no reference at all to the British government. I don't think it should be used. No, it's not. Um, okay. If you have a look in the, that study article, yeah, um, yeah. I mentioned study article number 19. Yeah, 19. It describes the, uh, the image of Daniel. Yeah. But, uh, in, in the study article following that, just as a reminder, um, what we've discussed in chapter 19, um, chapter study article number 20 on page 12. Yes, I'll just scribble 19. that down. Yeah, just scribble it down. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Sorry. That's yeah. right. Uh, on page 12 and 13, particularly 12, 13. paragraph 4. Paragraph 4, um, yeah. Yes. Um, it says, it reads there, I'll read it out to you. Please. Um, it says, note why we can say that today the king of the north is Russia and its allies, and it gives three um, points. Uh, one is they've had a direct impact on God's people, uh, banning the preaching work and persecuting hundreds of thousands of brothers and sisters who live in areas under their control. Uh, that's one point. Uh, second one is those actions show that they hate Jehovah and his people. And three, they have been competing with the king of the south, which is the Anglo-American world power. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it continues, let us see how Russia and its allies have filled the role of the king of the north. And then we go into the scripture, Daniel chapter 11. Yeah. So that gives you some points of how we say governments are under the control of Satan the devil. Not individuals in those governments, but governments themselves. And you're quite right, there are many people in governments who are opposed to what Satan the devil is trying to do to this world. And they try their very best uh, to make things right, to do things that are right, godly things, as you've mentioned. Uh, so it's not the individual uh, that the, this is dealing with, it's dealing with governments and how they're promoting um, Satan's ways rather than uh, God's ways. Is that Jesus, when he said in, was it Matthew, I don't want to quote too many scriptures. No, no, that's all right. Um, Matthew 24, 14. Yeah. Where Jesus said that after the, uh, the signs of the last days, he talks about uh, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. But he also in verse 14 mentioned that the good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth uh, for witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So Jesus is referring to a great vast preaching work being done about this kingdom uh, and how it would be preached throughout the whole earth. And how, when you look at the article in particular, it shows how governments have been opposed to that preaching work, uh, particularly since 1914. Um, I've copied down the article. I will I will read the whole the whole article, but I'm specifically noted your reference of page 12 to 13 paragraph 4 but i'll read the whole thing thank you may 2020 watchtower i've taken i've taken notes of that and perhaps it's best if i look that up and we talk again yes that'd be nice nice um is today a, a, a good day or is it um another time will be better? oh no no i don't have the internet at home um um so i've got to um I've got to go to a bar and buy a soft drink and then they only literally I literally got to ha have they'll ask me to move on if I don't buy another drink after about half an hour. Um, have you tried the library? It's closed. You all the libraries are closed. Uh -huh. You don't have access to it. Really? Um, uh -huh. I need to sort out a new library card because I might be able to sit outside the library with my laptop. But then I risk you the chance of being mugged. You see, that's yeah. the trouble if yeah. I do that. Um, so you need to give me. Tesco's branch near you? Well, I can uh, sit outside they, Tesco's, they, but there's lots of beggars outside Tesco's. They might think, oh, that's a nice laptop. Uh, Let's hit him over the head and steal it. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, you can, if they've got a cafe, it's open. No. But I don't know no, they don't. It. No. Oh, right. No. Um, so you're in a, uh, like an the, the thing about me is as long as you give me notice, I can normally speak most mornings and most evenings after 7.30. I don't have a family. I'm not married. So I can really fit in around you, provided you give me plenty of notice. Okay, I'll so do that. you can you can choose the time, 
but make sure you text me in advance. Hey, Rob, I'll phone you on Friday or Saturday or Sunday at this time. And I do apologise today because you phoned exactly at 10 o'clock. And uh, I'm sorry, but I, I had to speak to my doctor on something that was quite, in, quite important. Yeah, that's, um, no, that's no problem. No offence taken. No, that, that's OK. You, you, forgive, you forgive me for the year. It's been a year since we talked. My goodness. No, doesn't the time fly so quickly, Ray? It's quite incredible. Um, one other thing that I've been looking at, if I could, um, I don't want to swamp you with too many scriptures because you've been very kind to me. So maybe it's best for you to tell me when to stop. Maybe some of the time I've been looking at Christ's resurrection because I believe that Christ rose from the grave in the same body he died in, a physical body, and that Christ is now a man in a glorified human body. Um, 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Man is anthropos in, in, in the Greek. Um, the English translation of this passage is all in the present tense, but somebody who's a lot cleverer than me and knows the Greek, which I don't, uh, has told me that the Greek grammar isn't actually, the verbs actually aren't in verse 5. I have to... Uh, check this out that the grammar actually comes the ver the tenses come from the previous verse verse four which is why it's in the english translation as a present tense but it does say there is one god and one mediator between god and men and then writing about ad 60 the late 50s ad 60 paul would have written this almost 30 years after the resurrection paul calls christ a man anthropos 30 years after christ's resurrection here and it's in the present tense in the english translation Scripture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to scribble that down, if you want to comment, uh, I'll listen. Or you might want to just scribble it down as I scribble down some of your things and get back to me. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that one. There's one other thing, and then maybe that's enough. If that's okay with you, do you mind if I read Acts seventeen yeah. thirty one, which is similar? Acts seventeen thirty one. Yeah. Or do you do you, do you want to read it? Translation are you using? I, I'm using the New King James. It's a wide margin. I've got all my notes scribbled in the margins. Oh. And it's it's falling apart after 30 years. <laughs> it's on our, um, you know, you can download a, an app, a JW library, and um, you can actually download the various translations. King James. Right. Version. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, some uh, someone would have to do that for me. This phone is ancient; it's out of Noah's Ark. Oh, right. it, it it does have internet access, but I often tell people I've got no internet access because it's G three and it's really unusable on this phone. Yeah. And um, yeah. I've got to have the bat the phone plugged in when I speak for long periods, as at the moment, because the battery goes down very quickly, and. Um, Sometimes I have to bang it a bit because sometimes you lose the, the sound. Sometimes the, the sound goes completely. But anyway, um, do you want to read Acts 17.31? Yeah, it says, um, Because he has set a day on which he purposes to judge the inhabited earth in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and he has provided a guarantee to all men by resurrecting him from the dead. Thank you. It does say man. It's not the word anthropos. It's a different Greek word, which means a male a, a male being a male human human being but it's not anthropos it's a different word i must point out i'm obviously not a greek scholar i'm just an ordinary person um the first part of verse 31 looks forward to after armageddon to the judgment so it says he will judge the world that's a future tense in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained an obvious reference to christ so it's saying that the judgment you know that there's two judgments, that the judgment for believers who will be found not guilty, but they'll be judged for their works. And there's a second judgment, which I think is called the Great White Throne Judgment, where the wicked will be judged. Um, different Christians have different opinions as to what that judgment will be. Not everyone takes the flames literally. Um, but the point I want to make is it says it's going to be the judgment by the man. It doesn't say they're going to be judged by a spirit creature doesn't say they're going to be judged by an archangel Michael or an angel. It says they're going to be judged by a man. So I take it that 
Christ is a man now because he's going to be a man after Armageddon when he does this judging. And then the verse goes back and it talks uh, talks in the past tense. Um, he has he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Well, he has is a past tense. And it's saying that um, he's given assurance of this future judgment by raising him, Christ, from the dead. Now, the antecedent in the grammar, raising him from the dead, him, raising him, the antecedent is man. So it's saying that Christ was risen as a man. So maybe if I leave that with you, because I haven't, you know, if you think Christ rose as a spirit creature, I've looked at your literature. I spent many hours, Ray, looking at it, and I can't see any explanation to these two verses. That's another one. That's two. That's, that's, discuss. that's, that's quite yeah. enough. Um, as I say, um, thank you very much for your time. It's amazing that a year's gone by. Yeah. Um, just text me a time suitable to you in the morning, like 10 or 11 o'clock, uh, not around lunchtime or, or in the afternoon, because I, I do voluntary work for charity. Uh, and... The evenings I'm free usually after 7.30. I can usually fit it around you. But bear in mind, I don't always have credit on this phone. So don't okay. don't so ask I'll, me, I'll, don't ask me, I'll, is this convenient? Because if I've got no credit, I won't be able to text you back. Right, I shall uh, make the phone call because I get the, um, uh, the free hour on my uh, home phone number. OK. So um, when we get, make a time, um, I'll be... Paying for the call. You can either text me or you could phone me off the off chance. I never, I, I rarely take the phone with me. This phone is so, if I, it's got a, it's made of glass, so I've got a huge padded bag for it. Then I put it in my backpack and I've had it literally two inches from my body and it's been ringing and I haven't even heard it. <laughs> so I just leave it in, I just leave it in the flat. So I think it's best yeah. you either phone me and say, Rob, can I speak? You know, I'm going to phone you Saturday or Sunday or Monday at this time. And let's look at this one topic. Because I don't want to go from topic to topic to topic. No. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll just I'll just leave it with you, Ray. Thank you. Yeah. OK, Robert. I'll speak to you soon. And it'll take me a okay. while to look at those watchtowers, including the, the things you've you've mentioned. <laughs> Give me some time to go through that in great detail. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, OK. See you then. See you then. Bye, Ray. And that was Ray from Clacton, C-L-A-C-T-O-N, Kingdom Hall.